In this video, you're gonna learn seven different ways to make money with YouTube, how to rank your videos on the first page of Google, and the trends you need to be paying attention to this year to get ahead. Stay tuned. What's up, influencers? Sean here, coming to you from Orange County, California, and I'm excited because in this video, I interview James Wedmore, who's a YouTuber with over 64,000 subscribers. He's a video marketing author and coach, but most of all, he's literally an entrepreneurial marketing genius. So you're gonna wanna check out the whole interview, super packed with actionable takeaways. And hey, check out show notes in the YouTube description and on the blog post. Let's jump into the interview. Hey, what's up? Sean here with Video Influencers, helping you crush it with online video. And today, I'm talking with James Wedmore, who is an online video creator, business owner, entrepreneur. He's launched multiple multiple products and, and has an incredible influential YouTube channel and really is an expert in this space. How's it going, James? It's going really well, Sean. Thanks for having me. You know, it's exciting to have you on the show. And obviously, your YouTube channel is cool and all that kind of stuff's rad. But I think the most significant thing is you might be the leading video creator surfer on the West Coast. I mean, I think you're most known for your surfing probably than anything else. And I got my good buddy, Brandon Lucero, who runs a channel called Sold With Video to start surfing. I taught him how to surf and now we go surf together and somehow our GoPro footage makes it into all the like blooper reel and B-roll of our videos now, so. That is awesome. Well, today we're talking about online video and one of the reasons why I uh, wanted to have you on for Video Influencers is a lot of people watching are kind of in the YouTube space. So they uh, wanna create a maybe a comedy channel or a uh, makeup channel or a daily vlog channel. But one of the things that we want to expose them to is this idea that you could maybe uh, learn from the entrepreneurial business arena and that you could also not just look at, and the first question is a lot of ways when they think about, well, I want to monetize my passion. I want to monetize my YouTube channel. And the only way they think they could do that is with AdSense. What, what are some of the things you teach when it comes to income streams or multiple ways to monetize online video? Well, I, I, I'm a little controversial in that the first thing I tell people not to do is to monetize through AdSense. And the reason I, I, the reason I do that, however, is because the normal audience that I talk to is someone who already has a business. So it's a much different conversation if you are going, I don't have a business, but I want to put myself out there on YouTube versus someone who runs a, you know, they, they were their real estate agent or they have a local practice like they're a chiropractor or a dentist or an author. You know, if I'm an author and I've, I've written a few sell books, the last thing I want to do is put ads in front of my videos to distract people from the videos. The, the videos will help feed my readership and more book sales. So that's why I tell them, don't, don't do ads. However, if you're sitting there going, but I don't have a book, I don't have a business, I don't, I don't have that already, um, then we, we, we can sure at the first level say, okay, you can turn on the monetization and make your pennies. <laughs> as I like to say, but there's a whole nother world of possibility out there. And that's, um, that's what we need to start looking at. And I think we could, I mean, just play around with that for a while. Like my, my sister came to me the other day, she's all getting fascinated about business. She sees what I've done. She's like, I want to do that too. And, and she goes, you know, I was looking at when, when, when Facebook bought Instagram and she's like, I don't understand why it's worth any money when Instagram is free. It's free, so why would a company pay to buy Instagram? And I said it's because they get access to the users. I mean, there's, va there's value in the fact that you own an application, even if it's free, that people are dependent on, that they're opening 15 times a day minimum, and, and you have instant access to that. And you got to get your brain to start thinking that that's what you can do with a YouTube channel, is that you have a user database that is not like an app because the relationship is with you. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't fall in deeply in love with apps and software and logos as much as I do with other human beings. And, and so like, I think that's just a compounded effect to say, okay, if my goal isn't just to get a few pennies here and there for a thousand views or whatever for a monetized thing, instead, looking at the potential I have 
with a loyal audience that I can create through this platform, you can really start to ask much bigger questions. Like, what can I do with this audience? What, how else can I help them? How else can I serve them? And what's the possibility there? What's the potential? Everything from, um, you know, what my specialty is, is saying, okay, if this is my audience, can I sell them my own stuff? Can I sell them uh, anything from coaching to done-for-you services to um, digital training products, creating your own software that you sell to them? Um, you know, for example, if, if someone makes uh, makeup tutorial videos, what I've yet to see, you know, we've, we've seen the explosion of all these young girls and, and you know, I, I love it. They're getting sponsorships and they're getting, you know, advertisements. They're becoming these famous celebrities, but there's still a whole nother opportunity for someone like that to say, hey, here's my $10 a month membership club. And with that, you get access to a private community. You get, you know, coaching from me. If you're, if, if it's date night tonight and you don't know what to, how to dress up and look good, like we have a whole support group for you to help you. People are willing to do that. And I, and I know that for a fact, cause I have seen people do that and be wildly successful. Um, I mean, oh my gosh, there's just so many opportunities. And that's, that's primarily what I do is, is sell, membership programs, digital coaching, and content so I can help people simultaneously all over the world. I love it. So if we were to recap some of those and just kind of list off possible income streams, uh, they could create a product and then sell that online. That would be one. And let's talk about they what a product means. Because, you know, okay, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't necessarily, and there's so many, Sean, like we could just go crazy. Like, let, let's now take the word product and, and open it up and see what's in there. One product could be like, video training like you have additional videos that they pay a little bit for and they get and some people if i could just rewire your brains because i know what you're saying no that doesn't make sense okay uh why would someone buy my videos if they're getting them for free on youtube you got to get that out of your head we did a million dollars in sales and last year alone and we have free videos all over youtube it is it is such a it's such a misnomer to think that oh if i put it out there for free i can't then offer a paid version. That's just not true. If you provide more value in your paid version, people will pay for it. They want a community. They want support. They want accountability. They don't want to search YouTube all day and try and figure it out themselves. They want a step-by-step, -step, just give me the straight answer. Give me the path and I'll do it. And they're willing to pay for that. That's one option. Now, the other option, now I haven't done this yet. Well, let's, let's talk about this. Okay, there's affiliate products. Okay, so we get a, here's, here's one revenue stream. I get over a thousand dollars a month just by recommending like four or five products on Amazon. And Amazon's affiliate program is nothing to write home about. It's like 8% affiliate commission. So if you sell something for a hundred bucks, if you say, this is the tripod I recommend and it's a hundred dollars, I maybe get eight bucks. So when we're doing a thousand dollars a month, like that, that's a lot, and it took a lot to get there. So th that's another level, and that's as easy as just creating an affiliate link and saying, "Hey, I did a product review of this uh, Blue Yeti microphone. It's really cool. Here's a link if you want to purchase it." People are going to YouTube looking for reviews. So what are the products that you can review in your industry? Throw some affiliate links on there. Now the third, the the, the way you could go deeper with that is you could actually sell your own products on Amazon. Now, I personally haven't done this, but this is something that we're looking at. One of the questions I know you have for me, Sean, is like, what are some trends that you see? And I think this is a big one where you can go to sites like alibaba.com. And although I have disclaimer, I've not done this yet. I just know people who are doing this and getting really successful at it. And you can find bulk products. Like I can find a tripod mount for an iPhone and I can buy them for like pennies and get like a truckload of them, boxes full of them. I can throw it up on Amazon. And now instead of getting an 8% commission, I'm getting a way higher cut of that and having a way bigger profit margin. So you can have your own physical products that you're offering and, and you don't have to set up shopping carts or anything. You just put them on Amazon and people are buying them from your YouTube channel. They're buying them when they search Amazon, they can buy them from your website and you're making money that way. So there's, there, when we talk about product, digital products, software, 
coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, then we have physical products as an affiliate, and then physical products that you drop ship or sell yourself. Wow, I love it. It's And James, it's like a mindset uh, set shift. And I feel like for those watching, it's kind of like they could approach their passion for online video and their YouTube channel which um, with a much bigger mindset. Was that yes. kind of what you're saying? To think bigger, see it more like a business with multiple uh, facets and not just seeing it as simple as, as you say, the pennies that could come from AdSense, which unless you're really going to get literally thousands, even millions of views, it's not even going to be significant right. for most people, but they can monetize multiple ways. Yep. Absol absolutely. And monetize, not just monetize multiple ways, but monetize now. See, that's the big thing that no one tells you. When you hear about a YouTube star making all this money from the monetization, they kind of, most people don't really gather that there was like months or years where that really was pennies, where they had to build up the audience. Now they're reaping the benefit, but you, you can get a video ranked today. Like it went down a little bit for us on the ranking, but we had a video ranked number two for um, DJ, DJI quadcopter. It's one of those drones, remote control drones. That's a 600, it, it was at the time, they now came out with another one that's more expensive. Uh, the first version of it was 600 bucks. So now we're talking about a 10% commission on that, $60 a sale for people that are looking to buy those immediately. I mean, that's how we were just bringing in simple, and that it's easy to rank for things like that when you're when you have a strategy and you're intentional. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. so now shifting gears, um, people definitely gotta check out your YouTube channel, see all the great training content you have on there. But one of the things they'll notice is the way you come off on your YouTube channel is uh, yeah, obviously like you know what you're doing, like you're very confident, like you're very outgoing, like you're very extroverted. Mm -hmm. But one of the things you reveal and you even have a video about it and you'll talk about on Instagram is that you're actually an introvert. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, at all, but very, very, very true, yeah. And so that's kind of uh, encouraging because one of the questions we get all the time is people saying, man, how do I build my confidence to be on camera or how do I overcome the fear and apprehension of doing that? What's been your journey? What are your tips for getting on camera and just getting out there? So I will start by saying that in, I do believe that if you look at YouTube stars, I can guarantee you, especially the first generation of YouTube stars, probably 75% of them are natural introverts. And like you can see it. Uh, um, one of my uh, favorite one is, what's his last name? Charlie, uh, he's, he's a British kid and he actually started making videos talking about how he's a really big introvert and millions and millions of views and subscribers and um, yeah, really famous and, and he's just like, I'm an introvert and like, you know, it's easy for me because it's just me and a camera. And in fact, we've filmed extroverts. Like I'll have clients come in who speak on stage, who can command attention in a room of people, you put them in front of that camera and they freeze because the extrovert is fed from the energy of other people. So they, they need someone in front of them going, oh yeah, nodding their head and smiling. When you just have this lens, this dark void vacuum black hole in front of them, they just, like the life gets sucked out of them. An introvert, it just seems like that's not, they would talk to themselves anyways. They talk to a lamp if they would. So like it's it was very it was very natural progression for me. I've never had a struggle with that. Um, but I will say, bottom line, wherever you're at, wherever you feel like, oh, that can't be me. I couldn't do that. The only reason I'm where I'm at, and the compliments that Sean is giving me, so thank you, just come from experience and practice. I still. I still don't like watching myself on video. I still feel like I have a world of room for improvement, but you it's just like anything else. It's much more a skill that you practice and get better and better and better at. And I've been doing this now. I've been making videos while I was in front of the camera like back in 2008. So when you start doing something nonstop for what, uh, seven years, you, you either have to get good at it or something's really, 
really wrong with you. And uh, that's just, that's all that happened is just practice. So good. That's super encouraging. Mm -hmm. And so you would tell people, get out there and just start creating. I mean, seven years. So yeah. I, I maybe, and maybe capture a vision for the long haul to say like, maybe that first video, uh, it's going to be a little awkward, maybe a little weird. You might look back at later and be like, man, I hope I can't even believe I put that out there. But that's part of the journey, right? That's the process of maybe that learning curve. And you went through that. I mean, absolutely. Like you, you have to get that first video out there. You ha you just have to because it will be your worst. And do and, you love? And do you love your first video? What about the, what if we go to the earliest video on your channel? What would we find? It's so bad. It's so bad. Um, they're awful. They're my bartending videos, and at least I was safe because I was behind a bar. So, I, so the backstory is I used to teach people how to do flare bartending, like flipping bottles and stuff like that. So, um, like I knew how to juggle and all that stuff. So I could hide behind that, um, versus just me alone, you know, with a white screen, you're like, I, I gotta be all the attention. So I could, so I could say like, here's how to do a double flip to pour. Hang, it was, it was easier, but it's still, I was very robotic. I was very soft spoken. There was a lot of ums. There was a lot of like, I would repeat the same phrase over and over again. Like after every shot, I'd be like, and there you go. It's that easy. And here's how we do this. It's that easy. And then I'm like, you know, you don't, you don't hear all the weird things that you say and do. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I just knew I, I never had a desire to make videos. Like, that's the funny thing. It's like, I never said, I want to be out there. I want everyone to see me. I want them to know me. I want to be famous. There has never been even a, still to this day, not an inkling of a desire to do that. I just, from day one, I had a, I had a confidence and skill in filmmaking. Like I knew the basics and I went to film school. I'm like, I, I can do this stuff myself. And this, every time I pressed record on the camera, there was no one in front of the camera. There was no one there to film. So I was like, well, I guess I, I guess I have to do it. And I just always saw the potential of YouTube and, and the internet and video. And so I just, it kind of became a, uh, I must do this. So I shall. And, um, and you just kind of step, I just stepped, stepped up to it and kept doing it. Awesome. Well, now, James, you've got your finger on the pulse of online video and, and even social media. And so maybe the bigger landscape of opportunities online. You already mentioned one of the trends that's coming up uh, that people are doing is, is, is even taking physical products and selling their own products on Amazon through some creative ways. But what are some other trends that you see right now, maybe specifically for YouTube or just across the whole landscape? Like what really has your attention in 2015? The number one thing that has my intention in 2015 is YouTube advertising um, because uh, we've seen tremendous success with Facebook advertising and it, a bottom line at the end of the day, the people that are willing to spend money to um, you know spend on advertising will now, what's, what do I want to say? Like, that's really where you separate the, the, the men from the boys, the women from the girls, because that, I, that's the huge, that's the dividing line. I, the moment you can say, I am willing to spend $1,000 this month and put it into my business and see a positive return, like I got 3000 back, you literally turn what it is you're doing into a faucet where you turn on and off the money that you make. Because the problem still with YouTube is you're still at the helm of YouTube. You upload a video, you hope it gets the views, you hope it gets shared, you, you hope it gets ranked, you hope it's enough. With paid advertising, it's like, how much money do I wanna make today? And now, now people are gonna go, wait a second, well how do I do that and blah, 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 and it creates an entire journey of, of a 10 hour conversation we could have. But the point is, is if I know, if I knew numbers, like for every a thousand views I get, I could turn that into a certain amount of customers and those customers make me this amount of money. Well, now I know how much I can spend to get more views. And you, you know, YouTube will get you views for as little as like five to seven cents a view. So when you can just turn, turn on and off a switch, turn on and off a dial and crank it up, you have much more power and control in your business. And because so many people will be fear-based and not want to do that, it really is what separates um, the, the pros from the amateurs. And so I want to encourage people to, to try it, but here's the, with the disclaimer, 
you don't want to spend a penny on advertising until you know how that you can get that penny back. So if you're just doing it to like, oh, I just want to see if I can make get more views on my thing, well, that's great, but what's the next step? Like, do you have something to offer them? Do you have something to sell? Do you have your own? I mean, like I've seen people who just, hey, I do 30-minute Skype guitar sessions for 50 bucks or 25 bucks. Like, that's awesome. You're making money. You're making 50 bucks an hour that way. Like, okay, send them to a little sign-up page with a PayPal link, and now you have your guitar free guitar lesson videos on on YouTube, send some views to that, have your link below to sign up for a, a session with you. It's better than nothing. You get more, you know, so that's what I see is the biggest trend. Also, you know, Facebook's been taught, there's been all these things recently in the last like month or two about Facebook claiming to have more video views on Facebook than YouTube. That still feels very fishy to me um, because videos auto, have you noticed like when you're in the news feed, like videos auto play? And it's like, I didn't play that. So like, you know, imagine if you go to the news, the, the homepage of YouTube and all the videos are just playing automatically and you just like clicked which one to continue playing and the music, the volume turned up. They would count those 20 videos on one page as 20 different views. So I, I think the numbers might be skewed there. But um, you said you mentioned Shailene Johnson's interview. And I think she talked about it on the call that we, we did the podcast with. And she's getting a ton of views on her Facebook videos right now. And that has me very f fascinated and, and intrigued. Um, I feel like if you have a fan page, Facebook is really like, it doesn't really care for you anymore. They're not really putting your posts up as much. Um, they want you to pay for advertising to get any type of exposure to even to your own fans. That has a lot of people upset, but it sounds like at the same time, Facebook wants to do more with video and they want that to become more engaging. So I actually feel now that it could definitely be easier for a video to be more viral on Facebook than it is YouTube. Now, I'm not saying that it is. That's not what I said. I just feel that that might be something that we can expect that if we're going for more of a viral approach that Facebook might make that an easier process than, than YouTube might. It's just a, just, that's just a, an observation. Love it. So, so potentially go down the route of YouTube advertising. And for those who take action and have their back end figured out, mm -hmm. that's going to pay off this year. And then also pay attention to Facebook video. Mm -hmm. Now in 2015, uh, uh, people with their YouTube channels, particularly, and even if they're kind of the YouTuber or even the business owner, everybody wants these things. They want more views. They want more subscribers and they want more engagement. They want people clicking like and, and clicking, you know, and leaving comments and stuff. What are just some quick tips to, to no matter what you're doing, where you are, and maybe even mistakes that people make that are hindering their views, their subscribers, and that if they make these small tweaks that they could start to see an uptick in those areas? So, um, great question. I'll start by saying last year, we did 1.6 million views. I say we because it's like me wearing 10 hats, So, but it's still just me. Um, I, I did 1.6 million views and we only uploaded like five videos in the whole year. And, and so people always ask like, how is it, wh what did you do, blah, blah, blah. And the thing was I didn't do anything. Like to be honest, we had 200 to 210,000 views a month come in. We still do, I just checked before this call, we have 205,000 views of the last 30 days. And what it is, is it's the, my old videos that are still getting ranked and found. So what I did is in 2013, I got super serious and super focused about YouTube and consistently uploaded a minimum of one video per week that I wanted to get ranked long term for search terms that my ideal customer is searching for. Things like how to edit a video, how to make a video, um, how to make money on YouTube. Like that's a great one. I'm going to pull that up right now. And these, these videos took a little time for them to get ranked but they're now still ranked and still getting the views. So how to make money on YouTube. So I always hate this keyword because the people looking for that are people that are just want a quick buck. But my video is the, the number one video and it has over a half a million views in just a year. So my tips to people are never gonna be, okay, 
you got to do, you got to be more funny. You got to go more viral. You know, you, you got to do something shocking and crazy. No, you just got to find out in your market, in your audience, if you're doing makeup tutorials, great. What are the biggest questions that are being asked? You know, uh, I, and I don't know how to, how to, gosh, I don't know what those questions are. How to wear concealer. I don't know. You know, how to cover up a zit. Like, oh my gosh. Like, let, let me just type that in. Um, how to hide a zit. I can only imagine. Yeah, there you go. First video, 551,000 views. The second video has 987,000 views. They're all, they're all about half a million to a million views, like all the way down the page. That's something that people are, there's a high demand for. And if you can get on that first page with your video, um, the views will come to you and they'll come to you for a long time. So then the question becomes, well, how the heck do I do that? So we can talk about things that I, I feel like hopefully most people know, which is what I call the video SEO 101, you know, putting the keyword in the title, the tag, the descriptions, et cetera. But then there is what I call the video SEO 202, you know, the second level, which is, really comes down to this thing that we like to call channel authority. So if Sean has a channel with a million subscribers, he's uploading twice a week, he's got all these views, and I just started today, and we both decide to upload a video, it doesn't matter whose video is better, but we both upload a video called How to Hide a Zit. I can already guarantee that Sean's video is gonna pop up higher than mine in the, in the search results. And it's because YouTube is gonna favor those with experience. Now that to me, people get really discouraged by that. But that to me is the best thing in the world because all it means is you just, you just put in the effort. Like you just keep going and that the work you're doing today will now pay off for years to come. And that is why I shared that result is because I committed a year to be at least a video a week, be consistent, get them ranked. And I took last year off less than five videos. And they were like, they weren't like keyword videos. They were just like, oh, here's a testimonial. Here's a story of a, one of my customers, you know, and I just threw up a couple videos and we saw 1.6 million views last year without any work. So the work you do today can pay off next year, the year after, and the year after that. And that's, that's the game. Like if you're looking for a quick fix, if you're looking for results tomorrow, if you're like desperate for money, you gotta pay rent or something, don't even spend time on YouTube. YouTube is this beautiful thing where it, 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 you're planting the seeds right now and it takes time, but as long as you continually water it, and nurture it, it grows and yields an incredible crop for you. But most people don't have the patience. And the patient runs out, especially for the people that don't have the passion and the love. Like, I had so much fun making those videos, and we now have a whole plan on, you know, we're gonna be coming out with some new ones very shortly. And as long as it stays enjoyable for me, and I get to have it as a creative outlet, I'm gonna keep doing this forever and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's power, powerful tips. So two things I wanted to hit and, and yep. the second one first, passion and love. So, so you, you said if you can stay consistent, you could basically create channel authority but the only way to, to press through that patience and, and that tough season of not seeing the results, uh, you would say, is tapping into what you're authentically passionate about and what you authentically love. And I love what you said. It's, it's not going to pay your rent right away. Maybe never, but it's not going to pay your rent, especially right away. So put the, do what you're passionate about. Stay consistent. But then now you're reaping results when you sleep, basically. Mm -hmm. You have these videos working on autopilot for you, and uh, and that's incredible. I love that. Stick to your passion. But I wanna go back. You talked about ranking videos. You explained some tips on that, and uh, and I wanted to just mention um, what one of your products, Video Traffic Academy, mm -hmm. which I actually am a student of. And so just as really a testimonial, but something I would love to share with the audience um, is that when you talked about, well, how do you do that, James? That'd be the question. Like you mentioned a few things, do your video 101, 201, but that's kind of a lot. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. I love your product. I love that course because it walked me through 
uh, uh, step by step uh, screen capture videos of exactly how to do what you're talking about. And one of the things that I did uh, with my wife Sonia in in preparation for the holidays on our channel, Sean thinks is we had messed around and done a, a gift ideas video. Um, a couple years ago, we did gift ideas for him, and that one is almost at a half a million views. Mm. But then I got down and started thinking, okay, let's batch produce um, a whole series of gift ideas videos. So then we targeted another keyword, gift ideas for men, gift ideas for creatives, gift ideas for women, gift ideas for mom. And and, and then what we did is we shot them all in one day. So we, we pre-planned them, we got them all out there and then released them in preparation for the online shopping of the holidays. And so those videos now are, um, a, a lot of them are ranking number one, number two. And, uh, and that was all from literally just following the steps in Video Traffic Academy step by step. So I recommend if people are thinking about, well, how do you go deeper with that? Uh, that is a fantastic, investment and then the ROI uh, the the whole workflow for us was not only the views that those videos get so actually they do get some legitimate adsense we do have it turned on mm -hmm. but then we're recommending gifts that we personally love and then there's of course the Amazon affiliate links yep. and things that are on those as well so those now are working and the cool thing is we did them evergreen we didn't do Christmas gifts because people are always looking for Valentine's Day boom it's up again when it's gift ideas for him stuff like that so that was one of the uh, niches that we target. So I'd recommend, and, and I'll put details about this uh, in the show notes and in the blog post and the YouTube description. If you want to check out anything that James has done, that in particular will literally walk you through the strategy. And I think uh, that, like you were saying, even for the, the beauty gurus or somebody that's doing a vlog, this is a strategy that I think they could still use even in 2015 when it's like, oh man, all the big people are already big and there's no way to ever get there. But targeting those search terms, if they did that strategic strategically over a long period of time, they could build up and kind of be like the David and Goliath. They could mm -hmm. kind of be an underdog. Wouldn't you say? I mean, you think if they really drew, uh, got focused and built on that strategy, they could build their channel and their platform. Uh, abs absolutely. And we've seen musicians, uh, you know, musicians use uh, YouTube as a great platform to build their, their brand and, and build an audience. And the ones that are more, most successful are not the ones that put the most videos out there. Who are ha or have the coolest videos, but who simply do covers of existing videos because people are already searching for that. Like, I don't go to YouTube and just go, new music I've never heard before. And like, someone's video magically pops up. Like, if we look at YouTube as this is a search engine, you have 483,000 views on a video called Gift Ideas for Him, not because it went viral, not because everyone and their mother said, you gotta see this video, it's the greatest video ever made, but because people are searching for that. And so if, you're a, if you were a musician and you, you made up a song, you know, you're very talented and you play an instrument really well and you made a song called like, Lonely River Blues. <laughs> I'm just making some, like, and that's the title of your video. Don't expect any views because no one's typing that in. And you know this this for musicians, I get a little upset because they're like, well, I don't want to be a cover artist. And the thing is is it's it's if you're using YouTube, that's the way you have to play the game. You say, okay, well, I could do a cover for a song, and then I could end it with a call to action to say, "Go see some of my originals. You know go 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 see go click here for the rest of my music videos on uh, or my latest album or my latest song that I just made. You know it's a way to pull people in and then get them to know you. Um, and you know, I'm looking here for gift ideas for, for men and Sean's coming up number two. Tess Christine is beating him, got the number one spot and it's most likely because she has one million subscribers. So she's got more subscribers than you. She's, um, she has a little bit more videos but it's mostly because she has more views, more subscribers. And so that to me is actually a good thing. People say, oh, well, what am I gonna do? How can I compete with these people? They, the, these big people don't really spend that much time on the whole keyword research video SEO. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of uh, open space still. And I've been saying this since 2011 where you can pop a video in there and get ranked because they haven't even made a video on that topic, you know, that they haven't even thought of. So what I would actually say to Sean is say, okay, great. Now that you've ranked for gift ideas for him, 
I would do Christmas gift ideas for him, Christmas idea gifts for her, um, and then every holiday, every major holiday down the line. So now you, you've got it ranked for one. Let's canvas. Let's saturate it. Let's get. Let's cover all of it, and do it that way. Um, versus say, oh no, I'm done. Let's let's do something totally different now. Let's talk about how to ride a bike. You know, like, well, wait a second. Like this is this is if it's working. If one video is working, why wouldn't ten? That's how. That's I fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, we could stack up uh, annotations or playlists to tie it all together. Because if yep. somebody's kind of finding you for the one thing, it's going to be good. they're going to want probably more information in that same space. Totally. Um, last couple questions. Um, in, in one just quick question for, so for people, a lot of times there's this huge block when it comes to video of making it so complex and they can over complexify things when it comes to equipment. What is your, your, your like quick start equipment tip, uh, tips for people? Uh, it's always use what you got. Um, and what most of us have is our, is our smartphone. And so what we've really been encouraging most people, definitely if they're just starting out, is to just use an iPhone or Galaxy or whatever you know, fancy smartphone you have. The cameras are good enough now. Now, the film snobs, the videographers, and the, the film students of the world are going to scoff at that um, because they've been you know, trained in fancy, dancy equipment. But if you were to go pick up a DSLR today, here's some of the problems you'd run into. First of all, you have the costs. It's going to cost more money. Second of all, very steep learning curve, very steep learning curve. And you have, you know, so now you're, now you're learning a whole new skill just out of film and focus and uh, what is the aperture and how, what? I need another lens? What is the F stop? I don't, I don't know what this means. And I, I haven't mastered DSLRs. I, I, I you know, it's, I don't have the patience for it. It's not, that's not where my passion and love is. So for me, I'm like, Ugh, it's just going to slow me down. Um, and then the third thing is that Eve, I've seen, we've, we've all seen, my whole team, is filming videos with the, um, with the DSLRs can slow you down a lot. You know, if you, ha if you have a camera that only holds, uh, can only record for 10 to 15 minutes at a time and recording a longer video, everyone's up, stop, or up, we're out of battery, or up, we've got to switch this data scout, or up, hold on, you were out of focus, and up, hold on, all these little things. And so all these things that can make a, a, a much more professional, beautiful looking video, absolutely, can also become your, your biggest thing of slowing you down. And that's, that's really important to take into consideration because I think that's going to be the biggest problem. If, if, if making one video becomes like an entire week of your life and it takes a week to make one video, you're doomed before you begin because how are you supposed to grow from there? You know, sure, you could speed up a little bit and, okay, I got it down to six days, it's down to five days. And, you know, but that's, that's time I don't think is being well spent. So we always say start with whatever is the path of least resistance. And something like just an iPhone can get really good footage really quickly and really easily. And then there's, there's now a dozen or so little microphones that you can just wired lapel mics for 50 bucks or less that you just clip on your shirt, you got good audio, you're ready to go. So that's that's... That's what I recommend starting with. I love it. Start with what you have. And, and similar question, but if you were going to give advice to somebody uh, and, and tell them the fastest, best way to hack their learning curve, and as you're kind of speaking to this, meaning if now with all your context and all your history, if you were to start out again or if they're in a situation where maybe they already have a YouTube channel. They maybe have a video or two up, but they're like, man, the learning curve to try to get to, to up my quality, to up my knowledge, it seems overwhelming. Mm -hmm. What would be your tips to accelerate as quick as possible through the video learning curve? Ooh, how to hack the video learning curve. So it's going to have nothing to do with video. Like I'm not going to have any like, oh, here's a cool software or something like that. Um, we talked about use the simplest thing, but here's what I would actually do. First of all, I would block off a certain amount of time. So like, it's hard if you, if you have a job, um, this would be different, but let's say, let's say you don't right, right now, or you have a lot of free time. I would take Monday through Friday, block it off. There are no phone calls, no appointments. You don't have anything else that you're doing. And I would make a commitment. I would say by the end of the week, I want this many videos done and get specific. I want to have five videos 
in the can, edited, done, so I could upload them to YouTube at any time. And you just put yourself in a room and you force yourself to do it. And you put, put those type of constraints on you. Setting a goal, but then having a timeline attached to it with no distractions. Because it is so easy to sit there and say, oh, but I got to do this other thing first. Or, oh, it's my friend's birthday. Or, I, uh, you know, I don't have the time right now. And if we just commit and we put the constraints on us, we will step up or rise to that challenge and make it happen. And we've done that, we've done video shoots where we say we gotta get it done, we're gonna do two days of video shooting, we gotta do this many things, and we just make it happen. Sometimes you're like halfway through it and you're like, oh man, we've only done one video, we got five more to go in a, in a you know, with like three hours left. You, f you adjust, you figure it out, you make it happen. You, you got the internet, you got videos like this, giving you tips and advice, trying to make it easier for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to learn it all from scratch. You can learn from everyone's mistakes. Everyone's got their things to make your journey a little easier and a little quicker to get to where you want to be. But you got to commit. You got to just commit and do it. Man, commit, schedule it, and then follow through. And then I imagine people are going to go further faster because after you do that first week, as painful as it was, or that first two days of shooting and you get them all done, you learn a million lessons. Yes. Like, oh, wow, that wasn't very good and whatever. So just, and then that persistence, man, I love it. Well, James, lastly, what are your um, uh, current and just upcoming projects? Like, what are you having? And then for people, what are some of the things that you have? I know you've got great resources. You've got an iPhone uh, resource guide yep. so people can just they can get uh, the, the, the lapel mic you recommend and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff tell tell what what do you have going on some of that stuff as well as maybe new stuff you have coming on as uh, coming up as well so we got it we got a ton of stuff but I'll keep it short yes as Sean mentioned we have a, a free iPhone buyers guide so it's it's like the top six or seven um, tools that I recommend for turning your iPhone into the only video camera you'll ever need um, from the different microphones to um, the little tripod adapters and, and stuff like that, like the, what apps to use and stuff, which I think is really beneficial. Um, we also have free training if people want to learn how to rank their YouTube videos. And Sean, if you want me to give you a link so you can have that, it's just a free training class that shows you how to get your videos ranked and found in YouTube. There's just a simple three-part process that we do. 75% of my videos are ranked um, in the top three spots one, two, or three of Google or YouTube. And it's just because we just follow that process. Um, and then lastly, just to tell you what we're up to, which I'm really excited about, um, this is something, this is a whole other way with, you know, going back to your original question that you asked me, it's like, what are all the ways to make money? So here's the, here's the final thing that we're doing right now, and it might be a way that, like, might, this in itself might blow some people's minds. So about two years ago, I bumped into a gentleman named Brandon Lucero who became, he's with, his video channel is called Sold With Video and he, he and I became really close friends. And what he was doing, uh, it still does this day, but when I met him he was doing this, um, to make money was he was doing YouTube videos for the local business. So he would show up to the dentist, the chiropractor, he's done auto repair auto mechanics and public storage units, like some of the pest control, like some of the weirdest, like non-sexy, non-fun businesses, but they all need this. And he was making video commercials, uploading them to YouTube, and then getting them ranked at the top of YouTube and Google, and so they could funnel in new business for the clients. And he was helping them make more money with one video. And he could get these video, I mean, these are 30 second videos that he made with like, PowerPoint style videos, just like website images and like stock photos and a phone number at the end. And he charges anywhere from two to four thousand dollars for these videos, plus he gets them to pay him monthly to keep to keep the ranking. So he's doing between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month just offering these videos to clients and he's set up a whole process. And so now what we do is we teach that entire process to students um, how to how to go and get your videos, um, how to sell these videos to businesses and get their videos ranked for them. Because a business owner, if you can get them more business, they're willing to pay you for it. And so um, that's really what's on the horizon for me because it's, it's really exciting how we've been able to help people do that and create a whole business around this, this whole YouTube phenomenon. And let me just ask you about that particular thing. I, I love the concept because that tells me that maybe there's somebody who they've been trying to get traction with their YouTube channel and maybe they're actually have, and you could even tell me this, what kind of level uh, of skill do they need with video to maybe implement that? Maybe they're already a YouTuber, they feel pretty competent 
or confident with their own stuff, but they haven't really monetized that portion yet. They could, that, this could be revolutionary. They could start doing what they love, creating video, helping people. But what, you know, practically, James, like, you know, if that seems scary, I don't know, like, is the course going to help them, uh, you know, walk through that whole process? Does, does that question make sense? Yeah, it does. There are three areas to master in this type of business. There is the making of the video, which to answer that question is super easy. Like if you've made a video before, the, the type of videos that we show you how to make are like st stupid simple. It's like taking an iMovie slideshow and putting pictures of their website together and saying like, welcome to, to Sean's termite pest control service. Like we've been in business for 23 years. You know, you get a voiceover on Fiverr for five bucks and upload, upload it to YouTube. So that's really easy. Then the ranking part, which might intimidate some people, well, you're ranking the video for terms like uh, Irvine pest control. Okay, chances are there's not too much competition for keywords like that, so you're gonna rank pretty quickly. So it's, very, it's actually very easy. The hardest part, in my opinion, comes down to the third area that you need to master, which is the, the dreaded S word, selling. And, and so that's where we focus a lot of our attention because all it comes down to is confidence. Like after you get a few clients and you realize the impact and the value you can provide to their life and their business, all of a sudden you're like approaching a business owner becomes like the easiest thing in the world because you know you can help them. You know that if, hey, listen, you spend $1,000 with me, we're going to you, you get you $1,000 clients like once a week. Like it, they see the ROI, you have a confidence and conviction that you can help them. Um, but we launched the program it uh, um, September of 2014 and as we were coaching our students that was the number one thing that came up was just a fear around offering the services and that's really where we decided you know we really need to help people have breakthroughs in that and to say that the way the internet is today and how so much has changed like my dad's in real estate okay and he's he's an old-timer he's he's in his 70s now and he says he tells me repeatedly there has been more change in the world in the last 10 years than in any time in his entire life. So if you can imagine a business owner that's been in business for 15, 20, 30 years and all of a sudden this internet and social media thing comes in and you are sitting here knowing it just like a baby now is born like playing with iPads and getting it quicker than we do, it's like your duty to be able to help facilitate and transition um, these, these business owners that that can't keep up with all of this into this new way of doing business. And that's, that's a, a whole nother way to look at it to say like, you're doing them a disservice if you don't do this for them. You're not teaching them how to do it. You're saying, let me just do it for you. Let me take this whole load off your shoulders. You don't have to try and figure out, understand. You just got to be there when the phone rings because I'm going to send you business. And they love it. Yep. Very cool. Well, all of the stuff that uh, James is talking about, I'll make sure I get the links. I'll put it all in the show notes, the blog post, the YouTube description. So check that out. Video influencers. James, last question. You know, video influencers is all about helping people crush it online. What is just your like a top life uh, tip for you or uh, that just keeps you motivated, keeps you inspired? Just a parting thought that you would share with people so that they can crush it with what they're doing. Hmm. Um. It, it starts with being a little bit of a of a cliche that we've heard that life is a, life is a journey, um, but that's just normal where people kind of stop. And so for me, when I hear that term, life is a journey, it it means you never quite get there, right? That every and, and if you never quite get there, it means you have to be okay with where you are now. And I think it it actually means you need to be better than okay with where you right are right now. That you're in the perfect place that you need to be on your journey. Because if it is a journey, then that means to get to where you wanna be, you have to be here right now. And that this is all essential. And for me, what that does is that alleviates uh, impatience or a frustration that it's not quite what I want it to be or it's not enough or I'm, I don't have the views or the subscribers or the audience I want yet but that this is, the, no, you're in the perfect place at the perfect time. And the, you know, the, the, the whole analogy is, listen, you don't eat every meal that you're ever gonna eat in your whole life all in one sitting. You enjoy it one meal at a time. And so that's really my encouragement is to put much more patience and effortless grace into everything you do. 
not not work or do this because you need to or that you're frustrated that it's not working or that it has to but because this is where you are and you want to do it out of enjoyment out of out of love and out of passion awesome james inspiring thank you so much and thanks for being on video influencers appreciate you and have a great one everyone thanks for watching so thanks so much for checking out uh, this video make sure to subscribe so you always can see when we release new videos on youtube and uh, like the video and leave a comment about ideas that you have for people uh, that you'd love to see interviewed for the channel as well as questions that you have about online video also check out the show notes everything james talked about links in the youtube description below and then uh, make sure if you haven't downloaded the free guide that Benji and I put together with 19 tips for uh, optimizing your videos to get more views, likes, and subs. Hey, video influencers, appreciate you so much. Hit me up on social media. Let's connect and uh, let me know how you're doing and we will talk soon. Video influencers helping you crush it with YouTube and online video. Later. Later.